Right then, another golf video. So now, everybody in the comments section of the other golf video where we nicked Paul's engine, put it in the race car, rest assured, Paul's car has gone to the scrapyard in the sky because it was terrible. It's like a skip on wheels, basically. But his engine was good. It lasted the race, so we're happy with that. But we don't think we can get away with running it at the power we want for the two hours, especially in the heat of summer. So what's happening here is, what we, these are the engines that we wanted to put in the TT. We've not bought two because we're putting them in the TTs, but this is what we wanted to do for the TTs. It was going to be a winter job. Take one of the petrol engines out, put one of these in, see how we get on. And it's turned out that mid-season, we're going to be putting a different engine in the Golf and the TTs are going to stay petrol for the rest of the season anyway. So what these engines are, if you're not familiar, these are a CUAA engine, which is a 240 horsepower from the Passat, Tiguan and stuff like that. Watch all the other videos on them for how complicated and hideous they are and what sort of power we can get out of them when we tune them with a factory twin turbo setup. But what we're going to do here now is pretty much the same as what we did to Steph's. What we did with Steph's, we bought sort of just a bare block and then we built it up and it ended up, we had needed that many little bits that we just said this time, we dropped on a seller in Germany who got, I think they've got three or four, or might, these might be the last two, I don't know. They've got a few engines anyway. And these are, they call them brand new, but these have definitely been bolted into something. You can see that they've had like something bolted to them. And they've got this weird plate as well, which I'm gonna figure out what that's for. It's got a partner on it. It's like weird intermediate plate on the gearbox, which I've not seen that before. I don't think these are on the Passats from the factory, but we'll see. So what we're gonna do here now, this one's going to stay as it is as a spare. We just bought the second one just in case, or for the other TT. So we're going to shrink that, shrink wrap that up, and leave that complete for now. And then what we're going to do with this one here, Paul's going to take everything off we don't need. We're going to list everything on eBay that we don't need that we're never going to use. So if anybody wants any bits off these, they'll be getting listed soon. It's got DPF turbos, everything. It's all absolutely brand new. Look inside of that. Nothing, never been run up. Because you can buy some of these sort of engines that have been run up, some are just take out, whatever, take off, whatever. So we've got everything, but we don't need it. We just really need the bare block and the charge cooler, pretty much. We're going to try and bottom mount the turbo the same as a Golf. That is potentially going to need, if you just come around here, Danny. We're going to have to weld a fitting in the sump or drill and tap where the oil return is here, but we're not sure if the turbo will fit because of the balance shaft. So. We're going to see, I'd rather have a bottom mount turbo if I can, I'd rather it be the same as what's on the Golf at the minute, just for the centre of gravity and it just works better like that. But if not, we'll top mount it like we have on Steph's Caddy and that'll work. Obviously if you watch Steph's Caddy video, I think we got 340 or 350 horsepower out of this and that one road, drivable on the road, absolutely perfect. EGTs were less than 900. Probably be able to track data that as well, but we've never got to that point, I don't think. Um, and that's why I didn't want to do this at this point. I wanted to get Steph's Caddy Mint and kill it on track for a, six months and then be like, yeah, that's the engine we want for the Golf and the TTs. But we're going to be sort of only aiming for, yeah. I think we only need about 280 horsepower on our dyno or something like that to be right at the top in the uh, Turismo X. And I think we need about 270-ish for the Club Enduro. So although we're running less power on it for two two hours in that so we need to be right anyway so Paul's gonna rip this to bits and the other thing that I was saying we're keeping the charge cool just to keep it simple for now it's not simple and it's not gonna be cheap but we're gonna run it as a separate system so we've got a little um, VW up Skoda City Go factory header tank now this was cheaper than trying to fabricate so it's a quite a more friends on it than it needs these are pretty good we can put a level sensor on it if we really want to so we can see if we've got any problems um, and then what Scott's wanted to do here, to go to the dash, he wants a temperature before and after the charge cooler and a temperature in the sump for the oil and a temperature after the radiator. Because we've already got before the radiator, so that's like your coolant temperature. Um, he wants all them to go to the dash. We could try using all the factory inputs in the ECU and then pull them to the dash and stuff like that. But Paul just says he's got some stuff going to the dash anyway. Let's just make up a completely separate sub loom and we can add extra sensors in if we need to get more stuff. Um, 
These are the oil return fittings. There's two on this, obviously, got two turbos. Gonna probably end up chopping them and turning them into blanks or whatever. I might even get some machine that are blanks. And then we've got oil cooler fitting. That goes on the top there and replaces this heat exchanger. Now, I'm not sure whether we need to do that or not. I think I'd rather leave that for now because it's quite a big one anyway. Just see what happens. But I know it's a charge cooler off job to get to that. So I'm going to leave it in Paul's capable hands to decide what he wants to do. Um, we've got a crank trigger, to, a cam trigger to sort out because that's on the cam on these. So we've got to put one on the wheel. We've got the injectors to put in because we're putting solenoid injectors instead of the piezo. Um, and we've got the electric water pump to sort out because we don't want the um, electronic sleeve that seizes up and gives us also we put, I think it's a transporter water pump. Um, the variable oil pump, when you unplug it, that's just at full, so that's pretty good. And it only limits it down so that it's not pumping too much at low loads to try and get the efficiency up. It's not something that you need because that's where the regulation comes from. So yeah, got a lot to think about. What I'm going to try and do, I'll probably leave this one here while we strip it down and then you'll see how much crap we take off and how much more of the engine you can see. Because from the back you can't even see the engine. From the front there's not much of it that you can see. Um, oh, we've also got, these are an eight bolt crank. We've already got a flywheel that bolts up that will go to our manual gearbox. And it were already scheduled for us to do it. We've already only just sorted out all the parts. I've not got them here yet. Um, but we've also been looking at the data and the gearbox oil's getting up to about 135 by the end of the... When the engine failed last time in the Gulf, it was about 135 degrees, if I remember correctly. Oh, over 130, we're worried. Um, we've not had a failure this year yet, but it's going to happen at some point. We've done a few little tweaks internally, and I think we've got it pretty much nailed. But we said, for a while, we've got all this complicated stuff going on. We're going to have a gearbox cooler. I'm going to tap into the gearbox and put the oil drain into the right place because before we just had it tipping in and it, it, I think we're moving the oil where we needed it and putting it somewhere we didn't um, and that's going to be controlled by the dash as well because the pump that we used we had a failure on one of those in the Abifa once and we didn't realise that you'd only wanted to be turning that on when the oil got above a certain temperature which is about 70 degrees it says but maybe we'll go a little bit higher than that see what it sort of stabilises that when it's cold and just go a bit above that so it's not on all the time pumping really thick gear oil that's not really helping us so yeah a lot to think about a lot to play with and envy paul and jake for what they're gonna have to do but the plus side of paul's car going to scrap behind in the sky the engine that's in there at the minute we're going to take it out complete with everything on that can go in the truck in a flight case and that's the spare for now and then um, if this has a problem it's only a few hours work just to take this out, put it in. But I will be crying because these, I can't remember even how much they are. Maybe we'll flash up loads of numbers on the screen if we want to say how much they are, but it was expensive. So, racing life.
So, Jake whistled, and golf arrived on ramp for its engine taking out, because it's trained now. But, yeah, we're at that point. This engine, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's Paul's Octavia engine, but his Octavia's gone. We've got a turbo actuator fault that that's what didn't help us with the last race, so we're going to figure that out. But we need this engine out now, because we need this turbo off to modify it to go on the other engine, which, we'll have a look. So Paul's here. You've done many hours over the weekend, haven't you, Paul? Many, many, many hours. So we're at the point now where all the wiring loom's done. So this is, what's that? This is that DR, DR25. DR25, and it? Raychem, heat shrink stuff. Um, and then what's that other stuff? I can't remember what that is now. It's just adhesive version, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 So it's all basically, this wiring loom is as good as we want it to be, need it to be. Got all the extra wires and sensors and stuff all put on there for where we need them. There's some stuff in the car which you can't get to that goes to the dash as well, because some of the ECU getting some stuff and the dash is getting others. Um, yeah, everything's pretty much done. Just need to put the cam belt back on when the uh, trigger wheel and the pulley has been keyweighed. And then we're just waiting on the turbo, which, as I've said, we're going to have to modify. But then once that's on, all this can be finalised and away we go. Paul's managed to get the injectors in, so these are the solenoid type, with just a little tweak on the pipes. So we've still got the original Passat um, rail and the CP 4.2 fuel pump. So could cause us some problems. If it starts causing massive problems, then Paul's going to cry because we've got to put a CP3 on here. He really don't want to, but do what we can do. We've bought all new radiator pipes and everything as well because we've had enough issues with old knackered pipes and these fittings are a little bit different, so we've done that. And then this little jerry rig set up here, Jake decided to learn how to weld on a race engine that needs to be perfectly uh, ready in 24 hours time. But this little pump here is just gonna be something that we're gonna, we're having an output on dash for that, aren't we? Yeah. But yeah, we're having an output on the dash that when we're doing a pit stop, when the car's stationary, this pump's just going to come on and keep the water circulating round to stop it basically cooking the engine because maybe that had a, con what a contributing factor. We're not too sure, but we're not finding problems and leaving them. We find a problem and we fix it. So I don't know if there's is there else I need to mention about this, Paul. Or um, I think there is, is there? Into a minute now. No. So <coughs> we've left the standard oil cooler heat exchanger on for now. We're going to do the test on Wednesday, it's Monday now. We're going to do the test on Wednesday, hopefully, at Blyton and see if we have any oil temperature problems. If we don't, we'll leave that as it is. If we do, we've got an oil cooler that can bang on there as well. But from experience, the water temperatures might be a little bit higher if we leave it like this, but the oil temperature will be very similar on a race car, especially where we can get the oil cooler placement stuff. But we'll see and we'll go from there. While Paul's waiting for the last piece to put the engine together and Jake to finish taking everything out that he needs, Dan's just modifying the turbo. He's got this to have a little play about because it's just come. So, Prowl Allah is pulling out all the stops. We'd have loved to have made this ourselves, just got the core and welded it up, but we had time. So we basically just paid them to make us this radiator. So it's a UK made core with UK made end tanks on, all nice. And if you look, this one we're drawing, we did, me and Paul did this at track. This one we're drawing and they've given us exactly what we've asked for. So the idea with this, this is the radiator. So the idea with this now, we're gonna get some little tabs welded onto here, but it shouldn't be far off them to be fair. It should go onto here, I think. It's probably not exact, cos... Yeah, it's not. 
there's a slight tolerance in these radiators because it's normally plastic what bolts onto this. But yeah, they're not they're not a million mile away. I think it will go. Them two there, and then we just need to weld the other two on this side here. Yeah, basically, that's meant to go like that. Pipes are going to go off to the charge cooler. And then this is something that ABS Motorsport make. This were from the touring car Golf Mark V when that were a thing. Just a little scoop, not expensive either. And then the idea with this, we're going to have to chop it to suit this charge cooler. But let me uh, I'll move that out of the way because I'm going to end up damaging it. This goes on here like that. Just perfect fit, basically. That just goes like that. You just seal it all in, and away you go. So this is going to go in front of that, a bit of chopping required. Seal everything together so the air that's going in here has got nowhere else to go except expand out, slow down, go through the radiator. So this saves us loads of hassle. That's going to save us loads of hassle. So all being well, we one more all-nighter. That car will be running, but we'll see. So, Tuesday morning, it's what, five past eight. Paul's definitely not here, because he wouldn't normally be here anyway. The engine's in. We've not done anything with the gearbox, oil cooling stuff yet. We're gonna do that later. But the engine's in, everything's piped up. Charge cooler's on. Jake got that sorted yesterday. Paul stayed till about half past 12 yesterday. So, I'm told, I'm hoping it goes now. It does run. It runs. I know it runs. I'm not going to keep trying because we ain't got a downpipe. But I'm going to get it out of the building as well. A bit smoky than I'd like it to be. So, it runs. It's alive. Very smoky. It needs a downpipe now. So first job while I wait for Paul to get back in and recover from uh, his late one. Get it over into the fab shop get down to put a, uh, a downpipe on, your tip pipe to sort, and then this should be ready for dyno. Are we pushing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't go all the way in yet, because it smokes like mad. So, not usual I do this, but it's past home time. Got stuff to sort out. We need to get this front end built up. Well, missing loads of bits. Get it all loaded up. But as you can see here, the green lines are what it did before. So it's a bit lazy at the minute. The red lines, what it's doing now. So that's on the same tune pretty much. We've had to calibrate a couple of things, but same boost, same fuel. And as well, uh, where are we? So there, 30 is the maximum this will read. 
and now we were getting hot here which was quite lean but it just got hot we're, um, we're going off the scale so we're a lot better a bit too rich here at the minute because it's a bit lazier we need to work on the smoke map to uh, sort that out but yeah positive news EGTs are about 50 degrees lower than when this had cams in we never measured the EGTs when it didn't have cams so it's going to be a lot cooler um, because that will probably do a thousand degrees when we're on track but we're going to leave the EGT sensor in for tomorrow see what that's going to we've got pre and post turbo so we can see the correlation take the pre turbo out because if that wants to melt I don't want to kill the turbo so yeah now's the job where Matisse needs to take the power out because that will pretty much I think that's where it wanted to be anyway so I remember we're a bit down I can't remember Matisse knows but yeah see us at the track tomorrow we'll see how we get on Beautiful sunny morning. TT's here, just hard on the way. Up for the gearbox problems are fixed. Finish unstrapping it. As soon as Paul gets here, get the golf fired up. And get out in that. out in the TT and I'm sure you've seen the footage I might have left the camera here when I unstrapped it and it does fall off and it ends up on track and the kind gentleman that runs this establishment retrieved it from me and filmed me so yeah I saw it as I was going past the part I know what that is my camera so I took it steady but anyway so yeah TT feels good this tyre had had a new valve on it and it must have had 30 psi in it because that had 40 psi in when I came back in which I could tell it weren't good so we'll leave this ticking over here now and see if it does the gearbox sticky problem if it don't I'm going to go out again in that and let it have it but in the meantime this is the main focus of the day the following day if you've got all this sorted it's not all perfect yet this needs a bit of work but this front bumper's coming off anyway, getting a new one on there. This will just be a spare one. It's been butchered too many times now. Yeah, let's see how we get off. Hopefully, we can do some good lap times. Still playing up, nightmare, we'll try and figure that out. 
Time for a go in this. Disconnected for a second, then it went. Yeah, but yeah. I know because I've been sat with my foot on brake all that yeah. time. I mean, just take it out and leave it running. Then before we load it up, we'll just yeah. fucking try it again. Yeah. Just pull that window all the way off, and if you can. Ta. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. Just pull that window all the way off, and if you can. Ta. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. Just pull that window all the way off, and if you can. Ta. Come on. Thank you. adaptations and everything. I believe so, yeah. yeah. I think just check all that first, that's all we yeah. can do.
me then. It just yeah. cut out, yeah, it just stopped. If he started straight up, it just can't like it, it just it killed. No pressure regulator off the circuit. Is it? There'll probably be that plug on it. What the pin? The golf is doing all right, not perfect. Just had a fault code for fuel pressure regulator, which is brand new, so it's not the regulator. So we reckon this plug here, we'll not check it off yet, travel up. Let's go, doing it live. The pins in there are probably bent a little bit, so they're not making contact. So I'll let Paul have a look at that. So the TT is still being a div. It's annoying me a lot. So that's there now. I'm not going out in that again. Lap time wise, absolutely bang on. There's probably another second in car, which will make it quicker than it was before, which is good considering we lifted it up. So yeah, we've uh, still got work to do, but we're gonna have a little play with golf and then I'm gonna go back out while Paul finishes some other stuff. red flag and thought you did a time but we had to go another 20 minutes for it to do so my fault anyway the golf's loaded me and paul's gonna go to uh, get some dinner if we know what we need to fix now so we'll go from there so we're back at the workshop paul's just been doing some stuff on the tt to try and fix that speed sensor issue so we'll have a little look at that you'll know if it's fixed it in next video So we're onto the Golf now. So as you can see, it's on the ramp, getting a few little bits sorted. We're just mounting a little bit of a core here. Now it's not in the best place. I'd have rather it been up here somewhere, but I don't think we're gonna be able to do that. We're not gonna get much airflow through it. But if you look at what we're doing, this is gonna be better than nothing. So what we've got here is a little Mocal pump, which we've used one of these before and we killed it because we didn't have one of these on, which is a filter. So I'm hoping, I think this is like an 100 micron one, it's just got some, I don't know if it's, oh, can we get in it? Can we get in it? Oh, oh. Feels like we can. Feels weird. Feels like a spring, yeah. So just looks like one of them weird air filters like you get on pneumatic stuff, but it's not. It's for oil. So that's that. Viton seal, which is what you need. Gonna have to modify these fittings a bit and put some doughty washers on there, no problem. Using this braided pipe, this is oil resistant stuff, mounted bobbins, whatever. Then this is the next thing we, sort of the weird bit that we're doing. So bulkhead fitting, that's what, sorry Danny, I'm skipping about all over. That's gonna go in this bit here. So we're gonna probably put it as low down as we can in this little seal that should hopefully then get a decent supply of oil through, I'm hoping, but we'll see. Then we've got to put the sensor into something on the hot side. So we're going to figure that out. We've not got anything for that because Paul, we're going to put it into this, but this will be the cold side. So we'll go into the cooler and then into this. And then this little distribution block then, it'll be capped off or we'll put the sensor in there at some point. But this little distribution block, it's just a vacuum manifold for vacuum we're gonna have some little fittings in there which are not here yet we don't know if we're needing straights and 90s and stuff we're just gonna to go to this break hose and then we're gonna 
put that on the um, tap into the gearbox and send it onto the fourth gear and into a few different areas of the gearbox so we've got as many one two three four five six possible exits that we can put into the gearbox so we'll see this probably won't happen in this video because i think it's long enough but this is just so you know what we're doing to fix the oil problem and the other thing this has solved that oil temperature because that we're going to like 110 pretty quickly the oil temperature the engine oil temperature paul i forgot to ask you you told me you explained it to me and then i've slept since yeah you can't really see it because it's buried i've taken front off to get to it it's basically that water pipe there which one i can't that see one. sausage yeah where it disappears under charge cooler yeah there's two places it can go right yeah, one and you got like, one blanked off yeah so it's have to right. swap around right so basically what what paul did up, up. bleep that out so he fixed it so basically we've got water just going like this that's not good we needed it to go in and out now it does and the oil temps i think we've had it on the dyno since yeah. we've had the cool one up to 105 which it never got past 90 on the track and i think 91 oh, no. and the oil were like eight to ten degrees hotter than that and that's as hot as it got so we're confident we've sorted that the fuel pressure sensor you've not fixed that yet but we'll put a picture up when it's done yeah it's yeah, basically the pins up and up in it the common on race cars are not on road cars right. i've had it happen to every single common rail race car we've built i've never had it happen on a road car and that concludes this video i think so we've got it sorted we know what we need to do and literally we're racing it like Sunday and it's Tuesday and we ain't got time to do what else on it because this is like getting done in between customer jobs so wish us a lot of luck. If anyone knows any mechanics, we'll just do it one. <laughs> I'll do.